So now uh, the final speaker of this session is uh, Fergus Metropolis, who's the uh, lead surgeon of the Matera. Um, we look forward to hearing uh, his uh, talk on neuroprotection, a very important area, as I mentioned in my introduction. Thank you, Fergus. Uh, thank you, Dr. Edison, for the introduction. Um, after your brief uh, um, initial statement, I thought I shouldn't be doing the talk, but nevertheless, uh, since I was instructed to do so, I will. Um, neonatal heart surgery um, has been uh, uh, performed uh, for a variety of uh, congenital pathology, including the hypoplast left hand syndrome, interrupted aortic arch, coarctation, and arch hypoplasia. Uh, the main goals um, and objectives, um, despite uh, the, uh, um, uh, aside from the uh, uh, obtaining adequate anatomic aortic, aortic arch repair, is the cerebral protection or perfusion, cardiac protection and or perfusion, and lower body protection or perfusion. The uh, physiology of uh, the, onet, of the uh, neonatal brain injury consists of several cellular and molecular mechanisms which are responsible for the pathogenesis of neonatal hypoxic brain injury. Most of the available data originate from pneumothermic brain ischemia models, and neural cell death occurs with two distinct mechanisms, apoptosis and necrosis. Cellular necrosis essentially um, is caused by ATP depletion and is characterized histologically by bicnotic nuclei, swelling eosinophilic cytoplasm, and the presence of an inflammatory reaction secondary to the injury. ATP depletion causes a failure of the sodium potassium pump, leading to massive osmotic diffusion of sodium and chloride and water into the cell, resulting in cellular swelling. The high intracellular sodium concentrations causes depolarization of the cell membrane opening the voltage-sensitive calcium channels and massive accumulation of calcium. Calcium ions then activate the intracellular proteases and lipases, which disrupt the cellular membrane and uh, the uh, um, organ, intracellular organism. Cellular necrosis is essentially due to failure of the energetic mechanisms to maintain cellular integrity. Apoptosis, or programmed cell death, is due to the activation of specific genes, receptors, and enzymes that break down the cells in a programmed matter. It is characterized by nuclear karyosis, margination of chromatin to the nucleus, but with minimal cytoplasmic or inflammatory changes. It is mediated by a series of proteins that are subsequently activated and have a final common pathway. Um, which leads to the generation of a family of cysting proteases called caspases, um, of which um, uh, the caspase 3 and 8 are the most important in the um, creation of apoptosis. The um, two principal pathways, the extrinsic pathway, which is initiated by the classic inflammatory response, such as uh, um, with the uh, use of uh, soluble factors such as FAS and uh, tumor, tumor necrosis factor that bind to cell surface receptors and activate caspase 8, which in then activates caspase 3, and then uh, the intrinsic activations of caspase 3 is initiated by the release of cytochrome C from non-lethally damaged mitochondria. The brain utilizes up to 20% of total body oxygen consumption and 40% of its energy is used in preservation of cellular integrity and 60% in the transmission of nerve impulses. Electrocerebral silence and the disappearance of uh, somatosensory evoked potentials occurs at approximately um, temp nasopharyngeal temperature of 70 degrees. The basic theory is that uh, lowering the brain temperature would reduce mass of its metabolic demands. The rate of change of this reaction for every 10 degrees change in the temperature is referred to as Q10, and um, the uh, rate by which cerebral oxygen metabolism decreases in relation to pump flow and metabolism is um, <clears throat> uh, following a logarithmic model. The Q10 was, uh, is higher in infants and children than in adults, and this has uh, a significant implication in cerebral oxygen conception in the pediatric patients. Um, 
This is a, a schematic diagram uh, that involves the um, injury uh, as it caused by hypothermia, the degree of uh, establishing hypothermia, and the degree of rewarming. Hypothermia is not a new concept. It dates back to the uh, Hippocrates in the 14th century. Uh, this is the first report that we have. In the 18th century, um, a, a General Larry, a general of uh, Napoleon, used to treat uh, uh, amputated soldiers with ice. And it wasn't until um, 1950 uh, when Bigelow did uh, the uh, original experiments in uh, dogs and monkeys that uh, was able to demonstrate the protection um, for, of hypothermia in, um, when uh, lowering the body temperature to a uh, very low uh, temperature. In 1952, there was the original and first congenital heart defect correction uh, by um, cooling of the patient and direct closure of an ASD from uh, Dr. Lewis. And in 1960, um, there is uh, one prominent uh, Soviet surgeon, Meskalkin, who is uh, considered the father of modern Soviet uh, cardiac surgery, who um, had uh, repaired more than 20 uh, patients um, in uh, um, Siberia, just because there was an abundance of snow and ice in that area, and, we, and used it uh, very um, uh, thoroughly. Um, this is the picture of Dr. Bigelow that essentially is considered the uh, father of uh, hypothermia. And the original picture of the child that Dr. Lewis operated uh, um, from the uh, National uh, Photograph from the National Library of Medicine. The aortic arts uh, surgery group defines uh, the um, hypo uh, hypothermia as mild if it's uh, anywhere between uh, 21.1 to 34, moderate 20.1 to 28, deep hypothermia 14 to 20, and profound less than 14 degrees. Deep hypothermia circulatory arrest involves complete cessation of circulation at the requisite temperature of eight, um, 18 degrees. This is a standard aortic and right atrial venous cannula that are used to establish cardiopulmonary bypass and cooling. After the completion of surgery, perfusion is started back with gradual rewarming. The advantages are that it offers new and tissue protection by lowering the demand of glucose in order to prevent depletion of ATP, reduces the effect of hypoxia. Cerebral metabolism of oxygen falls by 50% for every six degrees fall in the brain temperature. The disadvantages include longer myocardial ischemia, loss of autoregulation, which occurs below 22 degrees of Celsius, coagulation, renal and pulmonary complication, and neurodevelopment morbidities. Undergrade cerebral perfusion um, evolved. Um, the first uh, report was in 96 and subsequently um, the experiments by, uh, and the reports by Pigula in 2000, um, start uh, um, with, a, with the use of this technique um, in adjunction with uh, hypothermia. Retrograde cerebral perfusion through the SVC has not gained much popularity in pediatric uh, patients. This is a diagram um, of a graft uh, showing to the uh, innominate artery and performing undergrade cerebral perfusion. Total body perfusion has also been um, advocated by some groups uh, by cannulating the descending thoracic, thoracic aorta originally by Yesui by suturing a graft to the descending aorta, and the same group later on described another technique by cannulating the aorta just above the diaphragm. Um, this is a schematic uh, drawing of, uh, as we lower the temperature, what happens to the oxygen consumption of the brain. Um, and also, as lowering the temperature, what happens to the cerebral metabolic rate. Uh, one of the most important studies that has been uh, reported um, for, with the use of deep hypothermic circular um, arrest um, and low-flow cardiopulmonary bypass examine 
the uh, outcome of these patients that had more or less than 40 minutes of circulatory arrest time. They compared all the neurologic events and they showed that neuromorbidity increased significantly after uh, the cutoff of 40 minutes. So as of now, um, the safe duration is anywhere um, between 40 and maybe 45 minutes. Wiji and colleagues found there's a nonlinear relationship between the duration of hypothermic arrest and neuromorbidity. And this, uh, colorates, uh, this coloration becomes linear after 40 minutes uh, of uh, circulatory arrest time. Comparison of uh, deep hypothermic cir circulatory arrest and undergrade cerebral perfusion. Um, the studies that have been reported so far do not demonstrate the clear benefit or statistical significant benefit of one versus the other. Intuitively, the undergrade cerebral perfusion has um, advantages, which are the improved cerebral cooling and rewarming. Um, with a theoretic, with the theory that it leads to better neurological outcome, a safer time, um, safe time prolongation of deep hypothermic arrest, potential use with moderate hypothermia than deep, possible perfusion of the subdiaphragmatic organs due to the existence of the collaterals, and that both hypo and hyperperfusion during ACP are deleterious. Recent evidence suggests that ACP flow should not be less than 40 ml per kilogram per minute to, to achieve the benefits. A study by Andropoulos uh, showed that um, longer deep hypothermic circulatory arrest time was associated with lower cognitive score, regional cerebral perfusion results in better cognitive score and improved neurodevelopment outcomes. Um, a paper by Barnard, the best evidence, um, study concluded that ACP is superior as an, ad, as an adjunct to deep hypothermic circulatory arrest compared to RCP or straight uh, deep hypothermic circulatory arrest. A meta-analysis proved that mortality benefit of ACP as an adjunct to deep hypothermic circulatory arrest alone is failed to prove the superior temporary impairment neurological outcome. Um, as, as mentioned before, the retrograde cerebral perfusion is uh, not significantly um, applic applicable to uh, neonates. Uh, aside from the hypothermia and the modes of cardiopulmonary bypass, there are other reasons that um, are um, pertinent to the uh, neuroprotection and the uh, outcome. Anesthetic agents in the form of isoflurane, sevoflurane, benzodiazepines, and propofol or even barbiturates have been extensively used in all of these patients. And uh, <clears throat> so far, we don't have any um, uh, prospective randomized trials that either um, support or not the use of them. Uh, although the FDA has recently added a warning to labels of general anesthetics and sedations that need to be repeated every three hours, um, to have a potential side effects. Randomized controlled studies of sedatives and anesthetics are inconsiderable. So we only have large uh, practice studies to go by. Ketam is, an, is a very common drug that is used perioperatively. It ad antagonizes the NMDA receptors and in calcium, and it blocks the influx of calcium inside the cells and there is an ongoing trial uh, with the use of this agent. Um, Theopental is one of the most used drugs um, as far as the uh, hypothermic circulatory arrest uh, medications. One study that uh, uh, questioned anesthesiologists on the percent of, of use showed only that 59% um, of them um, used it, um, and it, it does, um, uh, indeed have an effect um, on um, the brain by reducing cerebral metabolic rate, cerebral blood flow, free fatty acid, and seizure activity. Theopental should not be given before cardiopulmonary bypass as it may interfere with cooling of the brain and uh, due to its vasoconstrictive effect. Dexetomidine, a selective A2 receptor antagonist, may be found to be neuroprotective. 
um, and it remains to be seen. Steroids, um, dexamethasone at a dose of one milligram per kilogram and methylperdazolone are commonly used to mitigate this systemic inflammatory part, uh, response to cardiopulmonary bypass. Their role is questionable. In a neonatal piglet model, uh, methylperdazolone given eight and two hours before circulatory arrest was found to be protective in the brain. Newer drugs um, have been uh, tested and in one of the most uh, comprehensive reviews by Stegman, uh, allopurinol, studying allopurinol, sodium nitroprusside, erythropoietin, ketamine, dextromorphan, fedolamine, uh, only allopurinol found to have um, an effect by causing less seizures, death, and cardiac events in, um, uh, in hyper, um, left heart patients, although the benefits were not significant in non um, HLSS patients. Nitroprusside lowers the level of S100B after the arterial switch operations. So only allopurinol appears to be the only promising neuroprotective agent. Hemodilution and the hematocrit level. It is known that there is an inverse relation between hematocrit and cerebral blood flow velocity in the neonates and the infants. In the combined Boston hematocrit trial, Patients with lower hematocrit levels had worse psychomotor development and higher lactates than those with hematocrit greater than 24. A higher hematocrit strategy, on the other hand, had no major benefit. Um, as a rule, a hematocrit of uh, 25 to 30 is, aiming, uh, is aimed during cardiopulmonary bypass without or with deep hypothermic circulatory arrest. The, I'm going through the acid bait uh, management during coronary pulmonary bypass, pH stat strategy, or alpha stat. Um, neither um, has been uh, consciously uh, proven to, to have a significant difference in the outcome. Glycemic control, although there's data from the adult uh, um, literature that uh, a cutoff of 180 um, milligrams per deciliter should be maintained. There's no consensus uh, regarding the pediatric cardiac patients. The neuromonitoring in the operating room, uh, it can take the form of NIRS, transcalinate Doppler ultrasound, EEG, bispectral index, and somatosessory evoked potential. A systematic review by HIRS um, demonstrated that there is insufficient data to support the effectiveness of any of this strategy. It is very important also to focus on the immediate postoperative care and uh, reduce or eliminate the factors which can worsen the neurologic outcome. Management of cardiopathy, early detection and treatment of low cardiac output syndrome, diagnosis and management of other organ dysfunction, capillary leak, meticulous search for infection, avoiding of hyperemia, hyper and hypoglycemia, hypoxia, hypotension, coagulopathy, <coughs> um, and uh, um, treat um, appropriately the low cardiac output syndrome. The outcome of um, deep hypothermic circulatory arrest is uh, associated uh, with uh, uh, temporary neurological deficits or permanent neurological deficits. Um, the Boston circulatory arrest trial found that uh, at one and uh, um, uh, year follow-up compared to low-flow cardiopulmonary bypass, the um, deep hypothermic circulatory arrest uh, uh, patients had worse neurological outcome, but it became less significant at eight years after surgery. The long-term term data of this uh, trial um, concluded that the uh, duration of circulatory arrest um, and uh, neurological deficits are non-linear as far as, uh, uh, as long as the cutoff time was 41%. And the neurological testing at the mean of 80 years failed to show any significant difference. Um, in this slide, we have uh, all the studies that uh, essentially um, we, uh, by uh, um, level of evidence regarding the um, endpoints that uh, we uh, examine when we're uh, performing surgeries in uh, um, neonatal uh, arch reconstruction. 
And unfortunately, the level of evidence is not high enough to make concrete um, recommendations. Uh, a study from the SDS congenital heart surgery database um, examining what is the use um, of deep hypothermic circulatory arrest for neonates um, it, uh, out of, uh, showed that in 105 centers with an overall of 4,523 um, uh, patients, 59% um, of the surgeons involved some period of uh, undergrade cerebral perfusion and um, the hypothermic uh, arrest uh, was used in 45% of these patients. Uh, to make things a little bit more, um, even more complicated, um, MRI studies of uh, patients before and after congenital heart surgery have uh, shown that uh, a lot of these patients have PVL before surgery and that is as actually in, in about uh, 14, 16% uh, of the uh, cases, and this actually becomes greater than 50% after surgery. <clears throat> Dr. Vernovsky's uh, um, um, input on the neurodeveloped outcome um, elucidates all the factors that are pertinent to the um, neurological outcome and includes prenatal, preoperatively, intraoperatively, postoperatively, and childhood factors that affect the neurological outcomes of uh, those children. In conclusions, deep hypothermic circulatory arrest have, has evolved over the course of the years and appear the duration up to 45% is a safe modality. Neuro Neuromonitoring and neuroprotective strategies have evolved and testified to its safety, limiting its duration and are substituting by undergrid cerebral perfusion is the current trend, and improving the neurodeve neurodevelopmental outcome in an aortic heart surgery is the final frontier. Thank you. Thank you, Pages. It's a complex and difficult area, and you've done well to cover it. Uh, 